All right, welcome back to the shop. So I've got this M1163 here on the rack. Uh, what I'm doing to it today is we are gonna remove the old Appleton steering system. There's a servo. Uh, the rack is down here. Um, it's not gonna be super easy to get out of there, but I don't think it's gonna be that bad, I hope. Um, I'm about to dig into it. Um, I've got the new unit here, the sweet unit. This is the new upgraded one that they put with the uh, I-cubed package. And then I've got a couple other things to do to this. I've got a bad airbag on it we're going to put on. And there's a few more items we're going to do to this 63 while it's here. Uh, one fortunate thing is I have another 63 sitting right over there. And it already has the, the uh, suite unit on it. So if I need to, uh, you know, look at it to figure out the hoses and stuff like that, um, it'll make it easy. I, I think it's pretty straightforward, but just in case, um, it'll be nice to have one sitting there that I can look at for reference. Um, I'm not going to film the whole thing. I'm not going to you know, set up a camera and just film the whole thing. I'm just going to uh, do a, a portion of it and then come back and video the portion I did. And I'll make sure that that's enough so that if one of you guys are trying to do the same thing, um, you'll have enough information to be able to figure it out. So anyways, stay tuned. All right, so I have this whole wheel hub assembly off um, just because I had to uh, pull it off to fix something else in here. And I'm going to be doing the airbag. And then also it's going to give me more room. Uh, to be able to get up in here the other side i just pulled the wheel off and that was it i, I can leave all this in here because i don't have that much to do over here so i'm going to leave all this um so now the next step was to pull the tie rods off uh tie rod ends so i pulled both of those off if i need to i'll pull off this part of the tube um, i don't need this for the new one because the new one comes with its own because it hooks up differently it doesn't screw on here it's got a heim joint that goes in and pins in um, I think my next step is going to be removing this, cert this servo that's on here um, so that that way it'll give me enough room to move this thing forward and pull it out. So I'm going to remove this and then I've got to loosen the, can't even see it here, but the steering shaft that goes down. Um, I've got to undo it at the joint down here where it goes into the rack. And then that way I'll be able to slide it off there. And when I unbolt the rack, I can slide it forward a little bit to get it to get the shaft where it sticks out away from the frame. And then I'll be able to slide it out on um, the passenger side there, hopefully. All right, since I have to change this airbag anyways, look how bad that thing is. Um, I just pulled the strut out of the way. I'd already fixed this. I put a new circlip on it, had it in, but it's like, shoot, now it's in the way. So I took all that stuff out. Just to make more room. I'm not going to bother with the A-arms. I mean, they're not really a bother. If I have to, I can pull this heim joint off here and lower this A-arm down farther. But I don't think I'll have to. But now that I did that, so here's the servo. Here's the steering shaft. Now I can access this because this was behind the, uh, the suspension strut. That's going to make it a lot easier to get to that. And then, uh, I don't know, you can almost see it now before you could hardly see it. So here's the other, other heim joint. There's, or not heim joint, but uh, U-joint. There's three of those U-joints all together on this. There's one there, one here, and then one up here in the cab, you know, at the bottom of the steering sector where it goes in the, into the firewall. So, um, yeah, let's keep plugging away. All right, so I started to unhook the steering shaft here from the rack unit. And I, what I did, I, there's two set screws here. The jam nuts were 7 sixteenths. Um, I used a 7 sixteenths wrench to break them and then a, an 11 millimeter socket on a quarter inch ratchet to, uh, um, you know, get the nut farther off. I tried to leave the nut on and then loosen the, the set screw itself and then use the jam nut, you know, hoping it would grip because it had a lot of paint on the threads. It didn't work, so I ended up just pulling the nuts off all the way and then used an eighth inch Allen wrench to uh, back the set screws out. Uh, they have Loctite on them, so um, they're a little tough to, to do. You have to, you know, it takes a little while to sit there and just back them out with the Allen wrench, you know. But um, if you have one where you can't get it with the Allen wrench at all because of the Loctite, just get a torch in there, like a uh, you know a small propane, like a plumber's torch, and heat that up around there because that'll help break up the Loctite. That's usually what we do, uh, you know, if we have to, so we don't, you know, ruin the Allen wrench, uh, you know, the Allen wrench part, so you can't get it out. So, anyways, that's loose now. So now I'm going to go down to the rack unit itself and start working on that, and hopefully I can slide it out of there. All right, so if you could see in there far enough, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but the shaft sticks out of the rack unit about two inches or so. So I know I'm definitely gonna have to pull uh, this hydraulic assist ram off the front of the rack unit. so I have room to slide this thing forward so I can slide it out of there. Um, so what I'm gonna do first 
is I've got to pull the shoulder bolt out. That's what connects the, the boost unit or the assist ram up to the rack. I pull the shoulder bolt out and I've already cut the, um, the, the safety wire off these two Allen bolts here. I'll take the hoses off and then I'll pull these two Allen bolts out. And then there's also one Allen bolt right here that holds the back end in. Then I can remove this, this hydraulic ram off there and that should give me enough room to get that rack unit out. You can see the hydraulic ram on here is leaking really bad. Uh, this, this boot's hard as a rock. And when I cut the, uh, I was trying to cut the tie wire off on it, the thing just kind of came apart and oil just, just kind of started running out of that thing. So to get this off, there's a, there's a couple little flat spots on here on the ram. I just put a 916th wrench on there and then I'll use the, uh, the Allen socket to, on my impact here to back it out. All right, so this came out without a problem. Um, you can see here's that adapter that it goes into. And then the two down here, I was hoping they weren't going to be a pain in the butt and um, not too bad at all. So here's a seeker, a trick that I use. I use it a lot uh, working on heavy equipment. Instead of just putting the Allen wrench in there and just trying to turn it, which a lot of times you'll just, it'll pop out of there, it'll twist out, it'll strip, you know, the Allen head part. Um, you take and get a punch and a decent sized hammer, like I used a four pounder, and you put the punch right inside there and then you smack it a few times and it'll, it will loosen it up. And then I just put this in here, put the Allen wrench in and see if I can keep the light in there. And this is as tight as it was after smacking it. Look at that, I can just turn it no problem with this little short stubby ratchet. Um, so that that's, can save you a lot of headache on something like that. So I gotta leave that bolt in right now so I can pull the hoses off. And then, then I'll pull this bolt out and then I'll go back and finish that one. All right, you can see I got the uh, hydraulic cylinder out of there. Came out pretty simple, simply, came out easy. <laughs> Here's where my hydraulic hoses the other one uh, when I took off this hose here um, the oil was draining out for quite a while I was catching it in that tub but it's just splashing so much so I got I got my oil change rolling oil change thing to catch it um, so this this here dang it light stay off was the adapter that was on the back that was um, I took that allen bolt out so this could slide off it doesn't have to come off to get this out this thing just slid on there it was just sitting on there I just had to jiggle it out of there but to get the main rack out, this would still be in the way. So I'm just gonna take that out. And then just be aware, you know, once you get these lines off, if you grab this to, to move this, to pull it in and out, um, it's got oil in it and oil's gonna squirt out of these things. I shot a little bit of oil across the shop here. I'll mop it up. Um, so anyways, I just have to get, let's get the light in here. Um, looks like I just need to get these two bolts out here. They look like they're half inch bolts. Take a th uh, three quarter socket. I'm going to see if I can get an impact on at least one of them. I should be able to. All right, I got the rack out. It slid out just like I hoped. So you can see how much that shaft sticks out. That's why um, it's imperative to get this U-joint off. Uh, this is what I had to do to the U-joint to get it off. It had rusted on there or something. I had to set screws out, everything. It would not move. I ended up using my, uh, my air chipper to get in there and do it. So... That's where the rack unit sits. It slid right out the passenger side, right outside the starboard side. And then I slid this shaft out. Now the reason I did the rack unit first was I thought it was gonna be easier once I get the shaft out to change this. Because when I unbolt this, I don't wanna to have to fight the whole steering column. Um, I still might have to, I'm not sure. That's gonna be a whole other chore getting that part out. But um, I'm not gonna put the rack unit in until I change this. And then that way I could slide the shaft up into place, put the rack unit in and, and then pop the, the uh, U-joint on. Fortunately, it came with, with a new shaft and new U-joints and stuff like that. It's got all this stuff here in the box. They look like better U-joints too. They have a bigger set screw on them. A little heavier duty. Oh, it came with new, the new shaft and everything. All right, so this is part one on changing the steering system over to the sweet uh, manufacturing system. So we removed the rack, we removed the shaft going up to here, we've got the oil lines off, all that stuff. Um, in part two, I'm gonna be removing the, the servo. To get to that, I'm gonna have to pull the dash off, I have to pull the steering column loose, and I have to, I already got the set screws loose on there and nothing's budging on there yet. So I'm gonna wait to try it, you know, for on that till I get the steering column unbolted. And then this plate here will come off, and of course the new servo unit comes with a different plate, so that'll bolt right in there. 
So anyways, um, this is part one. Um, if that's all you need to do is remove that, the rack just to, to rebuild it, reseal it. This is the only video you'll need to see. If you wanna be able to, um, you know, see how to remove the servo, that's gonna be in part two. And then probably part three might be putting it all back together. We'll see how it goes. I just don't wanna make this video too long. This would be like an hour long, uh, two hour long video if I do the whole thing in one shot. So anyways, thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And if you haven't hit the like button ever, please try it. It doesn't hurt, it's free. And it helps me with, uh, with YouTube. Um, that way the, the more likes I get, the more that they'll spread my videos out. So anyways, thanks for watching and have a good day.